Hey guys, welcome back. Better than a Let's Play Season 2, Episode 26, Moon Quest Edition. I'm Enigmus. Clearly, we're back on Mars, but we've been busy. Holy cow, have we been super busy. I decided, after we did all of that excavation, that I really wanted to push the excavation down so that the level of the new floor would be the same level as the floor inside the area where we had all of our oxygen equipment, which meant a lot of extra digging, a lot of extra digging, but I found a new tool. It's from Mechanism, it's called the Atomic Disassembler. It's not bad, it, it, it's actually not bad. The, the only thing working against it is that it's uh, very, very short on power when you're using it on high speed mode. It's sort of like, it's a really handy tool, but if you gave it to people and let it work this fast and had like a really, really long lasting power source, people would say it was OP because for mining, for things like that, uh, you'd be able to just strip mine huge areas with very little energy cost. I, I get it, but at the same time, if you know what I do, you know what I do. And what I do is I build really, really big things and I'm tired of having all the best tools ruined because people who build little things would abuse them. It's just, it took so long, so long, so many times back and forth to charge. But we finally got it done. Now, what you're seeing is actually, we're taking little bits of time lapse as we progress through this process. This isn't the whole process. You may notice we've got some sort of strange walls going on that we're just kind of passing over now. Uh, it would have taken too long to show all of it in time-lapse form. And you can see now I'm going down yet another layer because I'm kind of getting a handle on where everything is and what we need to make it happen the way we want it to happen. And then we're going to have to go down another layer still to replace the floor with concrete. That's going to be our material of choice in all its varied forms is concrete from the ICBM mod, which comes with Moon Quest. Fortunately, I don't have to <laughs> explain that it's from a mod that doesn't come with Moon Quest. That's always a bonus. The reason I'm using concrete is it's actually fairly easy to mass produce if you can get an auto crafting system set up that supports liquids. I, I don't know if there's one in Moon Quest. Thermal Expansion has one. The reason I say that is because the recipe to make concrete requires four sand blocks, four gravel blocks, and a bucket of water. Now, if you've ever tried to mass produce something that requires a bucket of liquid, it is infuriatingly tedious to do it manually, but with the Thermal Expansion Cyclic Assembler, I'm having trouble saying that for some reason, uh, it, it's actually very, very easy because you can connect a water pipe to the crafting table, so to speak, and give it the recipe and then just feed it sand and gravel and it goes. And that's about as good as it gets in terms of automating the process. So that's what we're doing. All, that, all those gray blocks are concrete. And then the kind of weird white and black blocks that I'm using on the edges are reinforced concrete. There's concrete, and then from that you can make compacted concrete, and then reinforced concrete. It's actually mostly for the aesthetics that I'm doing it, uh, but it would offer the benefit if a meteor would, were to strike it, of having a better chance of surviving than maybe simply Mars dirt or something. Now, because we've decided to go the extra mile and turn this into an actual facility where we're going to be spending a very substantial amount of time, we're actually going through and correcting a lot of the oversights that we've made on the moon with the facility there and then in setting up this facility here specifically, not really making it look permanent. Everything was just carved out of the dirt in the you know native environment and then put machines in place and that was, that was what we were doing and that's what we did because it was quick and easy. Now we want to make it look like we actually plan on being here for a little while, so that's why all the extra effort and all the extra concrete being put into place. The whole idea here is, if you look in the back, you can see I've added a little room, a series of walls and a roof, to enclose that area. 
and then we're going to build straight up off of that so there's going to be a very small sort of cylinder looking thing in the middle of the structure and then on the outside is where we're going to put all of the factory bits that are basically all just for show they're just moving stuff around and doing different things for the sake of having something that looks really cool the nothing factory but what I wanted to do was, if possible, have an area that was oxygen sealed. And I'm finding that it's not quite so easy as I might have wanted to think previously. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I've actually got everything set up and I can seal the room for a short period of time. But it uses too much oxygen. It uses more oxygen than I'm currently producing. And I've increased the amount of oxygen that I'm producing fairly substantially by adding more uh, electrolytic separators and hooking them up to the water supply. I just, I, I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing it right because it's, it's using a lot of oxygen. Now we're way, way up above everything. You can look down, you can see the top of the little corner room and the, the concrete floor that we've put in. We're putting in a reservoir for water on Mars that will just sit there. It won't evaporate in the searing heat of the Mars days and it won't freeze in the frigid cold of the Mars nights. Uh, it'll just be water sitting there for us to use for all of our equipment that requires water, like water turbines and, and all that other stuff. Uh, I don't necessarily mind that we're bending reality here because what's the point of everything being perfectly realistic in a voxel world? Because as soon as everything is made out of cubes, it's not realistic to begin with. So we're, we're fine with that. Now what I would really like to do is, we, we've got our reservoir, that's as far as we're going to take it for now, uh, is kind of get down on the ground level and show you some of the machines, show you some of the things that we've done, and also let you see the perspective from the player as you're looking around this massive courtyard where our factory is going to be. It's always when I start recording that strange things happen, which is not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes they're, they're worth a laugh, but <laughs> Spider has figured out a way to get through our roof. We're inside the, the room. I, I'm pretty sure he's on the roof and he, he's confused. Gonna take our chances. Previously, this was our oxygen setup. We showed it in an earlier episode, but it was basically just hewn out of the Mars rock, and uh, not necessarily all that particularly tidy. It's still not all that tidy. It's hard to get some of these machines to look nice and tidy without running cables all over the damn place. So I'm going for compact to some extent over uh, particularly spiffy looking. Mostly because this is a really, really important system. We, we aren't going to be able to do a whole lot on Mars if we run out of oxygen. We're going to head out there momentarily. Uh, I've added a bunch of electrolytic separators to hopefully increase our oxygen output, but I still can't seal this room. I am not producing enough oxygen. These four guys up here are oxygen sealers. Previously, we only had one. I'll show you what happens. We go enable seal, and it says unsealed. So we go to the next one, we enable the seal, and it says unsealed. We go to that one, still unsealed. We finally go to this one, and it'll go unsealed, and ta-da, it's sealed, hooray. We're excited, we're happy, but what's happening is each of these electrolytic separators has a bit of a buffer of oxygen in it. And so it starts consuming that buffer, and if you're just looking at this, as soon as it seals, it doesn't move and you say, okay, we're good. But then you come back once that little buffer in the, in the separators is used up and you see just how fast we're depleting. Like we've got a minute and a half worth of oxygen with these oxygen sealers. So we need to get more electrolytic separators if we want to seal this room. Uh, and then more still if we want to be able to seal the rooms that will go above this room. So very... <laughs> Very expensive business, this oxygenated rooms. So in the meantime, we, we've got our good good old standby and full oxygen tanks on our back. So this is kind of a, a beginning idea of how some of the plane areas are going to look. This is all just the concrete that we were using in the time-lapse stuff. We've got, these are actually the uh, airlock uh, components taken directly from the moon base. I didn't make any more, I just went and scavenged them from the moon base. 
put them into service here and regular old glass this is reinforced concrete which is you take concrete and you make compact concrete by mixing it with obsidian so you take concrete and obsidian after you've made the concrete it makes compacted concrete and then you take that compacted concrete and you combine it with iron ingots and it makes reinforced concrete so this stuff is not cheap at all this is definitely not cheap but i like the look of it it's definitely got that sort of tech look to it so we're going to use it sparingly for various details throughout the project we're going to come back in here in a minute because there's some stuff i want to show you but first we're going to head outside here so this is the courtyard and i wanted to there he is that sneaky bugger oh i got the wrong we're not going to kill him with a crafting table but that'll do it so this is the first person view if you're like looking up towards the reservoir that's way up there we still got all the blocks that were sent up into the air by one of our explosives and then down here we've got quite a large area that we can start with to get our nothing factory underway now i came up with some very simple rules for the nothing factory first of all there's absolutely nothing wrong with actually doing things useful with the nothing factory one of the first things that we're actually going to take on is setting up uh, the advanced mechanism or processing so instead of doubling ores i think we can get up to four times or five, maybe even five times i think four for sure maybe five so that we don't have to do so much gathering for all the materials that we're going to need because this is going to be a huge project so we're going to be setting something like that up and it's going to be here it's going to be actually doing something useful and prov providing us with something useful and that's fine but the whole idea of this nothing factory is that we don't have to sit around and say to ourselves well i can't i can't think of anything that i want to automate so we just we can't automate anything that's that's definitely not going to be it uh, so that's actually going to be a fairly involved project, getting that set up, and we're going to go through it step by step and kind of take care of it that way. Also, I want to put kind of a roof up here. I think I don't think I can jump high enough. I'm going to go over like this, try and land on the top of the wall. I want to put kind of a roof. So if you imagine it's starting here, just kind of rounded like that and goes up to there and has kind of a rounded edge all the way around and then flat in the middle wherever it doesn't need to be rounded i've got a pretty good idea of how i'm going to come up with the form for that i'm just going to use plots.co.uk and they do have 3d rounded objects ellipses and things like that you can get a cross section of and work it out that way i there's no way i could do a shape like this curved on two axes free form without having it look like crap <laughs> We're going to do it that way and then we're going to cut sections out of it different shapes and fill them in with windows so it's not going to be a solid sort of thing all the way around it's actually going to have the windows and then probably fill it in a solid material in that the flat central area over this way these kind of arm things they're, they're not actually arms they're going to be another rounded sort of detail just like that but I ran out of the blocks, so that's why it just looks like arms, and there's going to be another sort of thing like that. And then this whole column is going to carry up all the way up there, past the reservoir. And then that way we don't have these huge rooms. If we want to really get down to the business with sealing everything off, they're just little rooms going all the way up that have functional little details in them, and we can certainly observe what's going on in the factory everywhere else. But the, the central area is really the only area where I'm going to have to worry about sealing things off if I seal anything off. So there's, there's all that. I mean, this is big. This is a big, big area we've already set aside for ourselves. And we've got all the vertical stuff all the way up and beyond the reservoir that we can add to it. So it's going to be massive. It's going to be absolutely massive. Starting with the mechanism or processing. But first, we didn't go to all those different moon dungeons and get buggy schematics for nothing. We have to take our buggy for a bit of a run. I made one. There was the option to make one with a bunch of chests on it, storage capacity up to 54 uh, blocks, items, whatever. But the chests for the moon buggy are friggin' expensive. Look at all the meteors coming down. I'm not going to be building anything for the, uh, you know, meteor resistant stuff. I don't know how explosive, explosion resistant the concrete will be. I'm kind of looking at it this way as if stuff starts to become pro problematic with holes getting punched in the structure then we'll think about uh, adding some meteor protection in there's a chest on the back of that guy 
Uh, I thought it was a hat I didn't have. We're going to get it all sorted out, but for now, I'm just going to build it and, and basically take our chances with Meteor Strikes. Right now, I'm kind of looking for uh, a safe place to uh, start using the Moon Buggy. I don't really want to start it down in the valley because I'm afraid it won't be able to manage the hills. We'll definitely be testing it on the hills. Uh, let's just kind of switch out and we'll head over this way a bit. There's our uh, lander over there with the Space Age high-tech bubble wrap. That <laughs> saved us from death falling onto the planet's surface. There's meteorites all over the place on Mars because I'm not looking for meteorites. I'm not gathering them up, so they just accumulate over time, and we've been spending a lot of time here. So it's. Uh, I also found out that there are dungeons on Mars in addition to the caverns with the annoying swarms of green slimy monsters, and apparently the boss in the dungeon is a three-headed creeper. It's just what I read. It could be all a bunch of malarkey, but at some point we're going to have to find out because if there's a three-headed creeper to kill, we got to get on that. So now let's try this. We're going to... There's our buggy. It's kind of, kind of an interesting looking little buggy. Uh, it's got a little more detail than your standard voxel kind of creation. Look at these guys. They're just swarming all over the damn place. I swear there's some sort of addition that has brought zombie swarms to this game. I don't know what it is, but sometimes just the zombies show up, up to like six or eight of them, and they just start misbehaving, and they're fast and rude. That guy's got a hat, and there's a skeleton shooting me from behind. I just want to get in my damn buggy without being harassed. Is that so much to ask? Oh, look. I shoot the zombie, and what happens? Two creepers spawn right where he was standing when I shot him. Oh, I got a soda top. Not that uh, that was a motivating sort of thing. All right, this is just getting out of control. Put me in the damn buggy. Let's drive over these bastards. Nope, that didn't work at all. That glove world. I, I, I would have thought I had that by now. Uh, what am I taking damage from? Is there like a skeleton down there that's shooting straight up? My oxygen is good. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. See all those arrows forming up down there? I wouldn't be surprised if the game still thinks my body is down there and that skeleton is having his way with me right now. Fortunately, uh, or maybe not so fortunately, all we wanted to do was drive our damn buggy. Now look at this. Every time he shoots down there and hits the wall, it knocks me up in the air. What a jerk. Look at all the arrows that the game thinks hit me. But they didn't really hit me because I was way up in the air. All right, let's try this. Critical. Oh, we, got, we scored a crit. I'm reluctant to, uh, you know what? We're going we're gonna to try this. Very quick, quick. Hey, stop it, you bastard. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go like that. Okay, here we go. Now he's got, see the double bow thing? Critical, critical, critical. Uh, I think the buggy is gone. Why? Hi, buggy. Why, why did you abandon this? Unless it's over here somewhere. You know what I think we need to do? Is we need to help the game to understand where we really are. Oh, there, there we go. Look at that. We were still in the... Imagine that, everyone. We were still in the buggy the whole time, even though we were flying up in the air. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just incredible? Bugger off. 
What a jerk. I thought for sure that, look at all these arrows that they shot at me thinking that I was in the goddamn buggy. And the whole time I was way up in the air. You. Shooting at me. And we're going to plop down the buggy. We're going to get in the buggy. Q, E, turn left, right. W, accelerate. S, decelerate. F, inventory fuel. <laughs> There's no fuel in the buggy. So here's our reservoir. Sim simple, simple, simple. And then the, the structure, the tower that'll be running up the middle of this whole thing uh, will stick up a little bit above here. And we're actually going to be getting very, very heavy use out of this. And I didn't realize we'd be using it so soon. But we need to set up a salination plant. That's one of the primary stages of getting this whole multi-tiered ore processing system in place is making salinated water. So we're going to be drawing water from here, probably with aqueous accumulators. You can use electric pumps. You can use build craft pumps. Uh, whatever suits your fancy, but aqueous accumulators don't require power. That's why I like to use them. I can put them wherever I need them and I don't have to run power to them. Not so with the build craft pumps or the electric pumps. It's not that big of a deal. But we're going to have the salination plant sticking around here somewhere, probably off, off this end here, this little short end, or that short end over there. I don't want it to be getting in the way of the structure that's going to come up here, but the whole idea, the salination plant is a lot like a smeltery in terms of how it's built. It's a multi-block structure. The higher you build it, the more layers you give it, uh, the better off you are in terms of efficiency and getting materials out of it. And it's, it's just one of those things that if you can kind of have a really, really big one, but at the same time not have it in the way, then that's sort of the, the best case scenario. So that's what I've actually started working on, is I've got actually all the blocks to get started with the salination plant. I have the two salination valves, a salination controller, a whole bunch of salination blocks, and the required four advanced solar generators the next episode we're going to take a look at what goes into making these guys we're going to build our salination plant we're going to get it plumbed in so that we can start working towards our multi ingots per ore or processing system if you want to be notified when i add that new video you can always subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on twitter at enigmas one or on google plus plus enigmas one please leave your comments and feedback Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.